This is the first part of the MainSmart Quick Start Tour video series. To begin with, we'll log on to MainSmart. When you first install MainSmart and are testing out the demo, you'll be presented with this tip of the day screen when you first start up the program. This offers you three different database options a sample manufacturing database, a sample building data database, or a completely empty database that you can configure with your own data. We highly recommend you pick one of the demo databases first so you can see how the program flows. In this case, I'm going to pick the sample manufacturing database. So I've got that radio button selected and I'll click the button Use Demo Database. MainSmart offers me the login and password with the demo and the user ID is going to be admin which is a user associated with the administrator user group. The administrator user group is able to do anything in the program. The password is 1234. I'm going to go ahead and log in. I'm going to need to resize my screen here for the purposes of this video. There we go. Now the user groups can be set up uh, user defined. We do offer several uh, predefined user groups and what these do, these allow you to include pretty much everyone in your organization uh, to use the program at some level. This will restrict what screens you can get to and what you can do when you get to those screens. Okay, now that I'm logged in, I'm going to go to the work order screen and I'm going to create a simple work order. Well, notice at the top of the screen we have navigation buttons. These buttons will follow you throughout the program. The leftmost buttons with a gray background are your normal day to day data input. The middle ones with a green background are your analysis and query and the buttons with the yellow background on the right top part of the screen are for configuration or setup. I'm going to start by going to the work order screen and when I open that screen my data is presented in a data grid and this is common throughout the program. These data grids are read only. You'll also find the same four buttons on virtually every screen in the program and they always do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and create a new work order. So I'm going to click the new button. Immediately I notice I have two colored fields. This represents required fields. I also have these yellow funnel buttons. These are filters so I can filter my equipment list by the equipment group. This will limit your selections. It's not necessary that you filter. It's just an option you can use. You can also type search and MateSmart will locate, in this case, the task by type searching the word oil. Okay, I have both required fields populated. I'll click the Save button and that adds the work order to the system. And there it is. And now I'm going to add some more data to this rather scaled down work order by left clicking the row that contains the work order this places the work order in edit mode and by doing so these boxes down beneath the data grid become available so I'm gonna go ahead and change a few things here I'm gonna change the due date and time If I click on this calendar drop down I can pick a different due date now these are fairly flexible. You can click on the month and pick a different month. You can pick on the year and pick a different year. You can click on the date as I just did. You can also advance or go back a month at a time. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. I can enter some estimated hours or you can have Mate Smart go ahead and set the estimated hours for you based upon data that's already been submitted to the system. Okay, I'm going to pick a type. And for the most part, anything you find in the drop down boxes is select only, and it'll be data that the user has set up. Okay, 
So in this case, I'm going to pick code compliance for the type, the priority routine, and the status I'll leave as active. I can assign this work order out to one or more persons, and I can link it to an account. I can also add instructions. Okay, so these are short instructions up to 255 characters. If that's not enough, and often it isn't, I could submit up to 2 gigabytes of text details per record. And this is virtually unlimited. Data can be added to this screen by typing, copying and pasting, dragging and dropping, or you can open files that you've saved in the past. And these files will, that one didn't have anything in it, so let's pick one that has something in it. Um, these could be SOPs, procedures on how to do a particular task. It could be safety instructions, pretty much anything you want. So I'll go ahead and I'll add these instructions. I click OK. And I can also add file attachments. And the file attachments can be any type of file. And there can be up to 255 file attachments per record. And these can be any type of file. And you can even set MateSmart to open the file attachments and send them to a printer automatically when the work order is printed. Okay, I think I have enough data on this work order. I'll go ahead and click Save. And that saves all my edits. Okay, so. I'm now on the topic edit, delete, or print a work order. And this is from the Quick Start Tour, Mate Smart. And to delete a work order, I would come in and left click the row and click delete. And it's saying that there are some parts linked to this work order, so I need to go delete those first. In this case, I'll just go ahead and cancel. I've decided not to delete this after all. And if I want to print the work order I just created, I can left click it, go to File, Print, Report, Assign Current Selected Work Order. And that will bring up the work order in a print preview. Now, of course, I could have sent it straight to the printer. I can also export it from here. And this will be topic of the second part of this Quick Start Tour. And that will be emailing and exporting reports out from MateSmart. They all work pretty much the same way. So we could email it, print it, or fax it directly from here. Okay, so that is the very basics of creating a work order in MateSmart. And the thing to take away from this video is Nearly all the screens work the same way, so what you've learned here you can apply to other screens.